Hi, welcome once again to another new video. This is Santu Sahu and you are watching Sahu's tutorial. Here I am making the mock test for the upcoming MA set and Assam slate that is also known as Nordic slate. In the previous videos, I have discussed some important MCQ questions along with explanations and this video is going to deal with also some important MCQ along with explanation. Before starting the session, I would like to request all of you, please do subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to get more notification that will upload in future. So let's get into the video with these wonderful questions here and if you want me to make video in, in, on any particular topic you can write it down you can suggest me in the comment box. So here is your first question. The first question is that the origins of love and hate was written by Ian Desart Soti, Saul Bellow, Lacan and Freud. The origins of love and hate this work was written by Ian Desart Soti. So here A is the right option. Ian Desart Soti is the right option. He has written uh, the origins of love and hate. Moving on to the question number two here. The subjection of women that was published in the year 1869. It's a feminist work. The subjection of women is an important text of George Eliot Byron, John Stuart Mill, Hardy. The subjections of women that were published in the 1816 was a uh, it is an important text of John Stuart Mill. So here C is the right option. Moving on to the question number Abdike's first novel, that is John Abdike's first novel, that is the Poor House Fair appeared in 1920, 1928, 1959, 1937. So here Abdike's, John Abdike's first uh, novel, The Poor House Fair was appeared in the year 1959. So here C is the right option. And in which of Saul Bellow's works, Joseph mentioned that alienation is a fool's plea. So Joseph is the protagonist in which of Saul Bellow's works where the protagonist Joseph has said that alienation is a fool's plea. The options are the adventures of Augie Merch, the Vism or Dangling Man Harjo. So here the right option is the dangling or the dangling man so here c is the right option in this work in this novel joseph appears and where joseph has said that alienation is a full split the dangling man c is the right option dangling man is a 1944 novel by saul Bellow. it is its first published work written in diary format so it was written in a diary format the story centers on the life of an unemployed young man called joseph and his relationships with his wife and friends and his frustration with living in Chicago and waiting to be drafted. Okay, and his diary serves as a philosophical confessional for his musings, and it ends with the uh, with his entrance into the army during World War II and a hope that the regimentations of army life will relieve his suffering. Along the Bellows second novel, that is the victim, is considered his apprentice work. So here, that is here, here victim, 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 victim is, yeah, B I C T I am the victim. So the dangling man is the right option here. Okay, moving on to the question number five. Which of the following metaphysical poets wrote a poem titled Easter Wings? So Easter Wings was written by whom? Which metaphysical poet? Henry Vaughan, Harry, Robert Herrick, George Herbert, John Dunn. So Easter Wings was written by here. Uh, George Herbert is the right option. George Herbert has written Easter Wings. It is uh, a religious meditation that focuses on the atonement, on the atonement of Jesus Christ, and its celebrations of bodily and spiritual resurrection draws its theme from one uh, that is Corinthians 15, and it is especially notable that the word victory found it in uh, found it in the biblical text and is repeated in both stanzas of the poem. So it is written by Herbert Sterwings, and it is focuses. Uh, it has focused on the atonement of Jesus Christ. Wilkie Collins' mystery novel, that is The Women in the White, was inspired by a British detective interview, French book, real life incident, Scottish folklore. Wilkie Collins' mystery novel, The Women in the White, in white, uh, was inspired by a French book, uh, and the name of the book is here. You will see that uh, that is Requel a Day's Causes Celebrate. Now, Women in White is a Wilkie Collins fifth published uh, novel written in 1859, set from 1849 to 1850. It is a mystery novel and it falls under the genre of sensation novels. The story can be seen as an early example of detective fiction with protagonist Walter Hartwright. So here the protagonist is Walter Hartwright, who has employing who has employed many of the slating techniques. Of later private detectives okay and Wilkie Collins found the inspirations for the women in white from a French book entitled recall uh, recall days causes celebrates okay moving at the question number seven 
Tono Bange, Tono Bange in H.G. Wells novels of this name is a character, no place, no medicine. And then, Tono Bange is a patent medicine, is a patent um, patent uh, medicine. Here, see, is the right option. Tono Bange is a realist semi autobiographical novel by H.G. Wells and first published in the book from in, 90, from, uh, from, in book from in 1909. It has been called arguably his most artistic book, and Tono Bange is narrated by George. Pon, uh, that is George Ponderabo and who is persuaded to help develop the business of selling Tono Bange and which is a, 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 a uh, that is a patent medicine that is a patent medicine created by his uncle Edward okay who was the psychologist for whom Bello uh, Saul Bello expressed the inevitable love and hate William James Freud Henry Bergson none of the above so here uh, who was the psychologist for Saul Bello it was Freud B is the right option who is Dorothea Brooks' husband in George Eliot's novel The Middle March? George Eliot's novel The Middle March, Dorothea Brooks' husband is Tartius Lidgate, Reverend Edward Caswell, Fred Vinci, Nicholas Balstrow. So here the husband is here, Reverend Edward Caswell. So here Caswell, here B is the right option. And Middle March subtitle is A Provincial Life, A Study of a Provincial Life, A Study of a Provincial Life, and is a novel by the English author Mary and Evans who wrote. As George Eliot, Middlemarch centers on the lives of residents of Middlemarch, a uh, fictitious Midland towns from 1829 onwards and the years up to 1832 Reform Act. So here she marries, that is Dorothea, marries the elderly Reverend Edward Caswell with the idealistic idea of helping him in his research that is the, the key to all mythologies, that is the key to all mythologies. Okay, moving ahead to the question number 10 here. In Charlotte Bronte's Bill Lux Roman novel, Jane Eyre, what is the name of the Reed's residence where Jane spends a majority of her childhood? So, Charlotte Bronte's Bill Lux Roman novel called Jane Eyre, and what is the name of the Reed's residence where, each, uh, where Jane spends a majority of her childhood? Low Wood, no, Moore House, no, Gateshead Hall, or Thornfield Hall. So, it was Gateshead Hall. C is the right option here. And Jane Eyre is a novel by English writer Charlotte Bronte, published under the pen name called Carter Bell and Bell in 1847. The novel charts the growth of a Jane Eyre, Jane Eyre the first person narrator, uh, from her unhappy childhood with her nasty relatives, the Reeds, to her blissful marriage to Rochester at uh, Ferdinand. And gets it is the first setting uh, within the story. This hall is where Jane spends a majority of her childhood under the care of the Reeds and is almost a prison to the uh, young Jane Eyre. So here gets it is the first setting here where uh, Jane Eyre has spent majority of her time. And which of the following poems by Tennyson is a monodrama that is that is a monodrama uh, Ulysses this dramatic monologue here monodrama or dramatic uh, monologue break 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 mod crossing the bar. So the Tennyson's monodrama dramatic monologue is here mod C is the right option C. Okay. The line, the sea dwells with beauty, beauty that must be, occurs in kids, Lamia, owed to a Grecian urn, owed in a melancholy endymion. So the line, sea dwells with beauty, beauty that must be, appears in the work, uh, owed on a melancholy, owed on melancholy. C is the right option here. Which of the following Spencer's predecessors was mirrored uh, in the Seifert boy, Colin Cloud, in the Seifert's calendar. In the Seifert, it was published in 1579. Okay. Uh, Philip Sidney, William Dunbar, Chaucer, Shakespeare. So here the uh, it is Chaucer, Chaucer. So here uh, the Chaucer was Chaucer was mirrored in the Seifert boy Colin Cloud in the Seifert's calendar by Philip Sidney, which was published in the year 1579. 15, so here C is the right option. Chaucer spent his life at court serving the three successive English monarchs. Identify the what one out. Edward the third, Richard the second, Henry the fourth, and Henry the sixth. So here Chaucer. Uh, uh, had served three successive English monarchs and they were uh, Edward the third, Richard the second, Henry the fourth. But he did not serve uh, Henry the sixth. So here uh, D is the right option. Which book according to Saul Bellow is a comic book about death? It's a comic book about death. Dancing Man, Humboldt Skip, The Adventures of Augie Merge or Hard Job. So the work that uh, that the, the deals with comic thing is here, uh, comic book about death is here, Humboldt's Gift. So here B is the right option. And Humboldt's Gift, a novel by Saul Bell, published in 1975, the novel which won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1976, is a self-described comic book about death, whose title character is modeled on the self-destructive lyric poet Delmore 
Delmore here. Delmore search. Okay. The end of the world is a poetic play by T. S. Eliot. No, John Drinkwater. No, Lasseless Abercrombie or Stephen Phillips. The end of the world is a poetic play by Lasseless Abercrombie. Here, C is the. He is one of the Dymock poets. He is one of the Dymock poets. Dymock poet. Okay. So Lasseless Abercrombie. The title. It is not too later to. Be, it is not too later to seek a newer world. Appears in Tennyson's poem Tithonas, Lotus Eaters, Crossing the Burner of the Ever. So this lines appears Tithonas no, Lotus Eaters no, Crossing the Burner no, none of that is no. So here uh, none of this, none of this, none of this here in none of this. Okay. So this line appear actually in Ulysses. This line appears in Ulysses. Hmm. The Glass Menagerie is a play by Eugene O'Neill. No, Tennessee Williams, Arthur Miller. None of this. So here the glass manager is a play by. Uh, it is a play by Tennessee Williams, the American playwright. Here, moving on to question number nineteen. Which work of Saul Bellow is preoccupied with social problem? Dangling men no. Harjok no. Humboldt's gift no. The Dean's December. Yeah, it is the Dean's December deals with or or it is preoccupied with social problem. So D is the right option. Who said Shakespeare has only heroines and no heroes? Arnold Johnson Eliot Ruskin. So it is John Ruskin. John Ruskin has said that Shakespeare has only heroines and no heroes. John Ruskin says Shakespeare in his comedies has only heroines and no heroes. The paper counter argues uh, this statement by decentering the heroes from the center and brings the heroines in the uh, in the main light. Othello is one of the greatest tragedies of Shakespeare in sixteen twenty three. So John Ruskin has said this line. Whereas say, whereas Samuel Johnson. Elaborates about Shakespeare's characters, and he has said that Shakespeare has no heroes. His scenes are occupied by men. His scenes are occupied by men. It was told by Johnson, but but John Ruskin has said that that Shakespeare has only heroines and no heroes. Who was it that called Henry James the Victorian fine consciousness? Who was it that called Henry James the Victorian uh, of I mean, the Victorian of fine consciousness? John Ross. Arl Stevenson, Thomas Hardy, Joseph Conrad. So it is Joseph Conrad. Joseph Conrad has said, uh, has commented on Henry James, and has he says that that Henry James as the victorian of the fine consciousness. Okay, which poem by Dryden acts as a defense of the Catholic faith and of Dryden's own conversion to Catholicism in the year eighteen sixteen hundred eighty five? The Hind and the Panther, the Palamon and Archite, religiosity or Alamance faith, Alexander Fist or the power of music. So here the right option is the Hind and the Panther. The fiend and the panther, where act it acts as a defense of the Catholic faith and its and its conversion to Catholicism. So here E is the right option. John Dryden wrote *Hind and the Panther* in the year 1687 in order to contribute to an ongoing dispute between Protestant and Catholic factions, which also acted as a defense to his newly converted Catholic faith. And *Madeleine*, a *Madeleine* is a creation of kids' figures in *Lamia*, *Isabella*, no *Endymion*, no it was. Uh, it, it, this character appears in the Eve of Saint Agnes, where Madeline is dreaming. Here, hopes of seeing a dream of her future husband that night. And the Eve of, in the Eve of Saint Agnes, John Keats tells the story of Madeline, a young woman who attends to the rituals of Saint Agnes Eve in the hopes of uh, seeing a dream of her future husband that night. Shakespeare left the following play unfinished. So, which is the unfinished play by Shakespeare? Timon of Athens, Coriolanus, Coriolanus. Titus Andronicus, none of these. So it is Timon of Athens. So he is the right option. Timon of Athens is the unfinished, the incomplete work by Shakespeare. Here, who is considered the Dickens of the Elizabethan stage for his intimate knowledge of common men? William Shakespeare, Ben Jonson, Charles Christopher Marlowe, Thomas Dacre. So it is Thomas Dacre. Thomas Dacre is considered as the Dickens of the Elizabethan stage for his intimate knowledge of common men. D is the right option over here. Which of the Shakespearean plays has an element of colonialism suggestively? Which of the Shakespearean plays has an element of colonialism suggestively? Hamlet, Cymbeline, Tempest, none of this. Tempest. So Tempest has the elements of uh, here colonialism. See, is there a definition over here? In which of the Shakespearean plays has an element of colonialism suggestively? Hamlet, Cymbeline, Tempest, none of this. It is Tempest. So Tempest has the elements of uh, here colonialism. See, is there a definition over here? In which of the Shakespeare's plays do these lines figure? The lunatic of the lover and the poet are of imagination and all complex. Midsummer Night's Dream, Tempest, to apply. So it is. These lines appear here in Midsummer Night's Dream, where the characters like Demetrius, Hermia, Helena, and Lysander appear. Aegeus, the king, Theseus, uh, there is Theseus and Hippolyta. Where Bottom, Nick, and the Fairyland, Titania. Fairyland, Titania is the queen. Appear in that uh, in that uh, drama, Midsummer Night's Dream. Okay. 
in which sonnet of Philip Sidney's Astrophil and Stella does Stella fall in? In which sonnet of Philip Sidney's Astrophil and Stella does Stella fall in? So Stella falls in uh, in uh, sonnet 104, no? 101, 102, 106. So here Stella falls in, in uh, 101. So here B is the right option. And Astrophil and Stella consists of 108 sonnets and 108 sonnets and, um, and 11 songs. 11 songs and 108 sonnets. Astrophil and Stella, Philip Sidney. Moving, uh, moving at the question 29 here. The actor called Morpheus. Morpheus is the sleep, uh, the the god of sleep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the character called Morpheus appears in which of the Chaucerian poems? The House of Fame, The Book of the Duchess, The Troilus and Cressida, or a treatise on Astrole. So here the character called Morpheus appears in here. Um, appears in uh, that is the the uh, book of duchess in the the book of duchess in the b so here in book of duchess the character morpheus appears b is the right option here at the beginning of the poem that the, the sleepless poet who has suffered from an unexplained sickness for eight years he lies in his bed reading a book a collection of old stories the, the book tells the story of sex and alloin and the story tells of the how sex lost his life at sea and how alcoin uh, alcohol his wife mourned his absence Unsure of his fate, she prays to the goddess Juno to send her a dream vision. And Juno sends a messenger to Morpheus to bring the body of sex with the message to Alcoin. So here Morpheus appears in the work, the Duchess of uh, the Book of Duchess by Chaucer. Okay. The incidents of changing the sex occurs in which work of Virginia Woolf, Mrs. Dalloway to the Lighthouse, Orlando Biography. It is appeared, it, it appears in Orlando a biography. Who describes the Chaucer as the whale of English undefiled Pope Dryden Shakespeare Spencer? So it is Spencer. Spencer has told that has told that the, the Chaucer as the whale of English undefiled. Which of the following was called by Lawrence as thought adventure? Kangaroo, women in love, rainbow, none of these. So Lawrence has told, uh, has remarked, has commented on uh, on kangaroo. So here A is the right option as thought adventure. Kangaroo is the right option here. Sir Philip Sidney died at the 30, in uh, 30, th right at 32 in the battle of, he did not die in the battle, false, the battle of Juthfen, the war of roses, so Sir Philip Sidney died at the battle of Juthfen, so here B is the right option. Moving on to the question number 34, who is being referred to in the expressions of Spanish's Gloriana and relics Cynthia and Shakespeare's fair vessel, England Elizabeth Queen Mary, so here, uh, here Elizabeth is mentioned as uh, by Spencer, Gloriana, Relics by Cynthia and Shakespeare by Fair Vestal. So here B is the right option. Moving on to the question 35. What is the mousetrap? A play by John Ben Johnson? No. A play by Ben Johnson? Uh, no. A character of Marlowe? No. Name of the play within the play in Hamlet? Yes, it is true. And it is also the mousetrap is also a, a, a work by Agatha Christie. The mousetrap is also dated to be work by Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie. Okay, moving on to question number 36 here. The Spanish Armada was defeated in 1588, uh, 1518, 1516, 1616, and of this. A Spanish Armada was defeated in the year 1588. Uh, the English naval uh, here, the English people had defeated the Spanish Armada here. Uh, the Spanish Armada was one part of the planned invasion of England by King Philip uh, the Second of Spain, launched in 1588. Uh, or the most fortunate fleet was made up of roughly 150 ships uh, and 18,000 men. Off the coast of Grape uh, Lines, France, Spain's so called Invincible Armada is defeated by an English naval force under the command of Lord Charles, Lord Charles Howard, and Sir Francis Drake. So, uh, the English naval had won the uh, battle here and it uh, came in, it, it launched in 1588. That is the Spanish Armada. The Roaring Guard or a mall. Or a mole cart purse was written by Thomas Middleton, Thomas Dacre, both A and B, none of these. The Roaring Girl, it was written collaboratively by Thomas Middleton and Thomas Dacre. So here C is the right option of both A and B. The Roaring Girl is a Jacobian stage play, a comedy written by Thomas Middleton and Dacre. The Roaring Girl is a fictionalized dramatization of the life of Mary Forth, uh, known by Mall cart purse, a woman who had gained a reputation on as uh, Virago in the early 17th century. Uh, who has coined the phrase Marlowe's Mighty Line? Dr. Johnson, Ben Johnson, Charles Lamb, uh, Arnold. So here, uh, Ben Johnson has coined the phrase Marlowe's mighty line. B is the right option.
করতে পারে বিজনেস অফ সেলিব্রেট খ্রিস্টোফার মার্লোস মাইট লাইন ইন হিস ভার্স অ্যাট দ্য স্টার্ট অফ দ্য ফার্স্ট পোলিও দ্যাট ইজ পাবলিশ ইন দ্য সিক্সটিন থার্ড সিক্সটিন টোয়েন্টি থ্রি শেক্সপ্রেস ফার্স্ট পোলিও ইন হুইজ অফ দ্য ওটস কিডস ওন্ডার অ্যাবাউট দ্য সাস্টেনেন্স অফ ইমাজিনেটিভ ভিজন ডু আই ওয়েক অর স্লিপ ডু আই ওয়েক অর স্লিপ ও টু নাইটিঙ্গেল ও টু অটাম বোধ এ এন বি নান দিস সো ইয়ার দ্য রাইট অপশন ইজ ও টু আর নাইটিঙ্গেল ও টু আর নাইটিঙ্গেল এ ইজ দ্য রাইট অপশন হ্যার আইডেন্টিফাই দ্য অথর অফ দ্য প্যাসেজ অ্যান্ড দিস ইজ দ্যাট আওয়ার সিভিলাইজেশন কম্প্রিহেন্স গ্রেট ভ্যারাইটি অ্যান্ড কমপ্লেক্সিটি অ্যান্ড দিস কমপ্লেক্সিটি অ্যান্ড ভ্যারাইটি প্লেইং আপন আর রিফাইন সেন্সিবিলিটি অ্যান্ড মাস্ট প্রডিউস ভেরিয়াস কমপ্লেক্স রেজাল্টস দ্য পোয়েস্ট দ্য পোয়েট মাস্ট বিকে মোর অ্যান্ড মোর কমপ্রিহেন্সিভ মোর অ্যালিউসিভ মোর ইনডাইরেক্ট ইন আর টু ফোর্স টু ডিসলোকেট ইভ নেসেসারি ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ ইন টু মিনিং ম্যাথু আর্নোল রেমন উইলিয়ামস টি এস ইলিয়ড আই এ রিচার্ড সো হিয়ার দ্য প্যাসেজ ইজ হিয়ার দ্য রাইট অপশন হিজ টি এস ইলিয়ড টি এস ইলিয়ড হ্যাজ সেট দিস লাইন টি এস ইলিয়ড ইজ দ্য রাইট অপশন হিয়ার ওকে মুভিং এট দ্য কোয়েশ্চেন নাম্বার ফোর্টি ওয়ান ফিজ অফ দ্য ফলোইং ওয়াজ লেফট উইং পয়েট লেফট উইং পয়েট ডব লেফট উইং উইং পয়েট ইজ অলসো নোন এস নাইনটিন থার্টি ইজ অডেন গ্রুপ অফ পয়েট হিয়ার ডব্লু ইজ অডেন ইজ দ্য রাইট অপশন হিয়ার ডব্লু ইজ অডেন ওকে বি ইজ দ্য রাইট অপশন হিয়ার last question here 42 where has kids expressed his dislike for poetry that has a uh, that has a palpable design upon us in one of his odes no in one of his lectures on philosophy no in one of his letters or in an informal chat with his friends no so in one of his letters and the letter was written to uh, j h reynolds 3rd february in the year 1818 on the uh, on the aims of poetry it was a letter to j h reynolds and we hate poetry that has a palpable design upon us and if we do not agree seems to put his uh, seems to put its hand in its breeches pocket poetry should be great and unobstructed uh, obstructed uh, a thing which enters into one soul and does not startle it or amaze it with itself but with its subject we hate poetry that has a palpable design upon us wrote kids in 1818 and its widespread view that poetry should in his words come as naturally as the leaves to a tree or not or not at all it should not be forcing itself or its opinion on us so these were uh, 42 questions i have discussed along with explanations thank you once again for watching the video tap the bell icon to get more notification and do not forget to subscribe the channel have a good night